This is Geometry Lesson 5-3, One-Step Congruence Proofs. We're going to begin this lesson with just re-familiarizing ourselves with some of the theorems, definitions, and postulates that we have studied throughout the first four chapters of this, this course, or actually I should say the first five chapters. We've broken it down into two different parts. Um, a list of some of these theorems, definitions, and postulates that help us prove that segments are congruent and then another set that help us prove that angles are congruent. So what I would like you to do right now is stop the video and read through the list of justifications just to re-familiarize yourself with the things that we have talked about thus far. You're going to need these as we progress through this lesson while we um, try and justify some conclusions that are drawn and then we're going to try a couple one to two step proofs. Now that you've had an opportunity to read through that list and re-familiarize yourself with some of these theorems and definitions, we'll start with some of these examples and I'll walk through with you. The first one here, if M is the midpoint of PQ that means that PM is congruent to QM. So even if I were to draw a quick picture and say M is the midpoint, that means that P to M is congruent to Q to M. And we have a key word here, midpoint, and if you look at all of these lists or op options, we have definition of a midpoint. We know that the definition of midpoint states that if, some, if we have a midpoint, then the distance between the endpoints of our segment to the midpoint would be the same. The next question states that if I have a segment that bisects an angle, T, A, R, then the angle T, A, B would be congruent to angle B, A, R. Now, if you look at this word bisects, and we know that we are bisecting an angle. Let's look through our list here and see if there's anything that would help us make that statement. And it does. It, this matches the definition. If we have something that's a bisecting an angle, we know that the two parts would be congruent, and that is the definition of an angle bisector. Be very careful when justifying your conclusions because sometimes my students will just write definition of a bisector. You need to be specific. You need to say what kind of a bisector. Is it an angle bisector? Is it a segment bisector? Is it a perpendicular bisector? So be very clear. The next one is if R, I'm sorry, if PQRS is equal to the reflection over line M of ABCD, then my two figures are congruent. Here we have an isometry that's been performed and we know that then our figures are congruent and that matches as we studied in lesson <clears throat> one, the definition of, a con of congruence. So we would write def of congruence. Here, this is a really, really important one to kind of help us get ready for some of our proofs. If we have proved that our figures are congruent, then I can say QR is congruent to BC. QR is a part of our figure BC. So then I can say that the parts are congruent. So if I look over here, look and see if you can see anything that would say if two figures are congruent, their parts are congruent. Now when I look closely at my list, there's nothing in any of these but this, this theorem that has a big acronym. Acronym. Remember that acronym stands for Corresponding Parts of Congruence congruent figures. And that's exactly what this is. So the justification for this statement is CPCF theorem. The last one. If QR is congruent to BC, then we can say that the distance from Q to R is equal to the distance from B to C. And we spent a lot of time in lesson three or lesson two talking about that. If we're talking about segment congruence here, we have oh, a segment's congruence theorem that supports that. We know that, that we can say they're congruent or they're equal, or if the segments are equal, they are congruent. So this is segment congruence theorem. I'd like you to now stop the video and try the next, answering the next proof that's um, after this problem, and then I'll work through it with you after you've had an opportunity to try it.
In this first proof that I have listed here as an example, it gives me a given statement that says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. But it doesn't give me a picture, and I really like working with pictures. So what I'm going to do in this space over here is I'm actually going to draw myself a picture of two triangles that are congruent just to help me visualize what I'm trying to, to prove. So I'd like you to do that now. So here you have um, the drawing of two congruent triangles. Now, I'm trying to prove in the end that angle ABC is, is equal, equal to angle DEF. So as I begin my proof, I always write my given on the first line, and I know my proof statement is always going to be on the last line. So in this case, I, I only have a, a few steps that I have to worry about. And when we write the given on the first line, we know that the reason for that is because it was given to us. So the next piece is that if I have congruent figures, then I know that my parts are going to be congruent. So I have this set of angles congruent to each other. I want to get the angles equal to each other, but if I get them congruent first, I might be able to get them equal. So I go ahead and I can say the parts are congruent due to CPCF. We talked about that one in an example up above. And now if my angles are congruent, then I can say my angles are equal in measure, and that's because of the angle congruence theorem. So that's our first proof for this chapter. Now let's move on to the next lesson, or the next example. We have BD bisecting angle ABC. So once again, I'm going to draw my picture. ABC, BC, and I have a ray going through here, and it says it's bisecting. So I'm going to mark it up, showing that those two angles are equal, because that's what a bisector does. And I'm going to put my ray, label my ray. So I know the first line of my proof is always my given. So go ahead and rewrite that now. BD, oops, doesn't look like a D, bisects angle ABC. Because of the definition of an angle bisector, definition of an angle, make sure you get the angle symbol in there, bisector, I can say that my two angles are equal. This ABD and DBC uh, or CBD are equal. So the measure of angle ABD equals measure angle CBD. So that was just a quick proof. I want you to take a minute to look at this last example that I have, or this next example that I have here for you, and see what you can do with it. And then I'll uh, start the, when you're done, start the video again and try the, to see, or to see how you did. Okay, this last picture here, to, uh, uh, I should say the last proof here, says that I'm trying, I'm given the measure, or I'm given that angle 2 is equal to angle 4. So that's the first thing I'm going to write on my line, measure of angle 2 equals measure angle 4, and I know that that's the given. And they gave me a picture already, so I didn't need to do that, but what I do want to do is mark up my picture with what I have here like I did the two arcs there showing that those are um, equal. The next thing I want to do is I want to prove that X is parallel to Y and I can do that already. Hopefully you've identified that these are corresponding angles. So we can use the corresponding angles postulate to state that those lines are parallel. This concludes lesson 5-3. We'll do the last proof in class and then we'll do spend the rest of the class working on some more proofs on your own.